you know, I guess uh, you, you never get sort of sick of feeling this way because uh, you know how hard everyone's worked for it, and um, yeah, that there's no there's no better feeling than the finishing off a season, uh, knowing that uh, you've conquered uh, everyone else and uh, ended up on top and uh, made a lot of people happy. And yeah, no, it's it's, it's a fantastic feeling. And harder to do because you were the hunter this year. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, we, we we knew this year was going to be a difficult year. We had some pretty significant player losses at the end of last year. We knew that as champions we'd be uh, targeted from day one, all those kind of things. And, you know, we haven't we haven't made a big deal about it, but, you know, the whole uh, Champions League campaign takes its toll as well. You know, you look at how it's affected the Mariners, you look at the other teams, uh, you know, Melbourne and Sydney, when they had to play in Champions League, how they formed in, performed the finals. It's a tough ask. I mean, these boys have... You know, worked really, really hard this last month to get where we are, and uh, you know the fact that uh, yesterday, even uh, in the dying minutes, we were the ones that uh, were trying to win that game of football and, and found something to do it. Uh, it it's definitely, uh, you know, more satisfying, uh, if I can put it in that way, um, achievement because of all those things. Most of the squads signed for next year. There's only just one signature that all of Queensland wants. Exactly. Um, yeah, look, all right. I mean, I, I know that uh, there's plenty of curiosity, but like I said I'm, I'm going to enjoy today. Look, they'll, we'll have uh, some talks at some point this week, and I'm sure there'll be a resolution this week, and uh, we'll move on from there. But right now, just uh, enjoying uh, being coach of the, of the championship winning side. No scoops for us today, Ange? Hmm? No scoops for us today? Scoops? Uh, no. Um, I think uh, most of the scoops last night went on before after I left, mate. So. Uh, <laughs> Um, you probably know more than I do. Yeah. And you've, you've set a new benchmark for the A-League. We look around the clubs. Uh, you're one of the few clubs uh, across the country that's got an identifiable uh, culture and uh, philosophy. That's uh, A lot of that's down to you and the work you've put in. When you first started out on this journey, uh, there were a lot of uh, bumps at that time. Uh, did, did you ever imagine that it would come so quickly to get this group uh, playing the way that you wanted? And uh, I mean, you've really created a culture and identity for this club. Oh, look, that was definitely the goal, and, and I think if anyone you know, goes back right to my first press conference, I, I think I, made, I sort of stated that as an ambition to, to really create a culture and a real football club, and I think we have, and I think that's as big an achievement for us as winning the competition and obviously having the success we've had. I mean, the, the success is something that you can't really plan for because there, there are so many things that uh, you know, could, could bump you off that course, but... The fact that we've won both championships has been uh, an unbelievable effort by the players, and you know. But I think our main sort of, well, my main sort of uh, driving force was to create a, a football club culture. And, and like I said, I think if you know, it goes back to the transcript of our, my first press conference. That was, uh, you know, I stated that pretty clearly. So I'm really proud of that, and I think it's something that um, will, will exist in this football club for a very long time. And, um, and you said that. You also came for a challenge. And I'll finish it later. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to speak a bit slowly this morning, mate. I'm not, I'm not as sharp as I usually am. You came here for a challenge, obviously, and you've made history. Is there still a challenge here for you? Oh, there's challenges all the time. Yeah, I mean, you know, if there wasn't, um, you'd, you'd stop doing what you're doing. I, you know, I said last night that... Uh, yeah, it, 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 that's that's part of me and, and the person I am, particularly in my professional life, that I'm constantly seeking challenges. I I, I question every day whether um, you know what I'm doing is is the best I can do, and whether uh, I can do it any better or or, or, or do it any differently. And um, you know, challenges are everywhere. There's no uh, there's no standing still in our uh, in our profession. Uh, if you do stand still, then you know it's it's, it's been. Uh, quite evident that people will go past you so the challenges are everywhere here uh, anywhere else and, and I guess for me that's that's what I'll be uh, looking for uh, in the next phase of my coaching career. Ange do you think uh, if, if it's bad news for Raw fans and you do go is, is, is Rado the, the man to take over do you think or does it, does it probably need to look sort of far and wide? Yeah you know if I even go near that question um, <laughs> And I'm slow this morning, but I'm not that slow. Um, yeah, yeah, no. Look, I, the one thing that, you know, as I, I was going to finish off my answer is that hopefully we, we've created a culture that exists beyond any individual, whether it's me or player or, you know, I remember when Matty Mackay left last year, everyone sort of saying, you know, well, how are you going to replace him? He was, you know, Mr. Brisbane Raw, and he was. He was a massive part of it. But hopefully we've created a culture and an environment that goes beyond me. If, if I haven't done that, then I'll fail, I think, in my, in my task. So, um, you know, I, I assume that, you know, whether it's today, tomorrow, and five years' time, 
uh, whoever the coach is uh, down the track, the club protects this culture and this philosophy. And uh, uh, I think it's proven to be successful and, and, and it's proven that, you know, if you do have that sort of framework, then uh, you can build something special within any uh, sporting club. So a replacement with him. And can I ask you, even, not about the decision, but have you made a decision? Have you made up your mind? Or? I'm, uh, I'm really enjoying being the coach of the championship winning side and, and uh, you know, I, I know it's hard for people to understand but I, I haven't thought about anything else but just trying to make sure that we, you know, we won this thing yesterday and uh, that's all I put my energies into and, and that's all I think about and that's all so, you know, making decisions or thinking about decisions or, or what I'm going to do next is just, you know, and maybe that's just me as a person but just hasn't entered my thoughts and it's not my thought right now. It's you know, what I'm thinking about is, like I said, just enjoying, um, you know, what our success and, and what we've achieved. How hard is it to keep a, you know, you said a change over rollover? How hard will it be to keep this group together? Do you think to try and go for that three in a row? There are constant challenges. I mean, the boys, in terms of the playing group, you know, we worked really hard to, to try and keep the core together, and you know, I think you know, 90 percent of the squad's contracted for next year. Um, so, but you know, I had 90 percent of the squad. You know, contracted last year, and, and the reality of it is, we we, we had to um, sell some some pretty significant players. So uh, you'd like to think that the core of this group will be here next year, and I think they will. And I think that's the key thing. Um, the more stability you have in the playing ranks in this competition, the the better you are to repeat your success. So, um, but I'm sure, again, with with the success we've had, that the players here will get targeted, particularly from overseas, and uh, and there may be a battle to to keep every one of them here. Um, but, you know, we've got some good young players who, who just started to get a bit of an opportunity. I mean, you know, young Fitzy and Luke Bratton did really well yesterday. I thought they made a massive difference in the grand final and, and they've been great towards the end of the year. You know, Rocky Visconti, um, you know, the, the boys we threw in the last game against Brisbane, against uh, Gold Coast, sorry. Um, you know, there's some good young boys who I think are ready to step up and uh, I'm sure they're going to have to because we're going to, you know, I'll be surprised we don't lose a couple. Is this the best group of players you've coached in? Um, yeah, I think again that would be unfair to, to 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 all. I mean, I you know I I've coached some you know some good players, some good teams, and and I guess when you have success as a group, it, it means more. And uh, this is the second time I've sort of built a team and had success with, and they both, in my mind, uh, equally had to overcome some real massive obstacles. Um, I, I think the football this team's played is certainly the best uh, that I've coached, but I think that's because I'm a better coach than I was. So you know. The team at South Melbourne, I had maybe could have played like this if I was a better coach, but I think you know I've become a better coach, which allows them me to be able to get my team to play a better way, and hopefully that that continues. But in terms of you know the, the commitment to success, um, you've got to have a winner's mentality to, to do what we've done and, and to, to win back to back. And uh, again, the, the the one thing about this team, particularly in the last two years, is just their ability to find ways to win a game of football, even when things. Uh, look like they're stacked against us is just incredible. Ange, the uh, penalty was a big talking point. Mm. Uh, you, you a bit dirty that Borussia sort of copped a bit of flack over it? Yeah, look, that's disappointing. I mean, you know, I, I guess people are, people always look for a villain and uh, he's an easy target, I guess. But I think all he tried to do was try to score the winning goal after scoring a superb first one. Now, you know, beyond that, I think everything else was out of his control. And, you know, he, he stepped up and took it, which wasn't an easy thing to do. He'd missed his last one. Um, I mean, I didn't know who was going to take it, to be honest. Uh, we, we had no idea. I wasn't too confident about anybody. Uh, he stepped up and he took it. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, like I said, I think people like to, to uh, create some villains and he's an easy target, but I, I didn't see him do anything wrong. And we often hear coaches uh, talk about their, their work's not done on match day. It's done uh, during the preparation and you only have three cards to play uh, during the the actual contest, uh, you played some pretty bold uh, cards yesterday, mm -hmm. taking off uh, Eric and Mass and bringing the young kids on. Uh, I guess central to that was also the fact that Thomas uh, uh, came more centrally, was on the ball more. That must be uh, incredibly satisfying uh, for you to win that little mini battle. Yeah, look, it was, you know, I guess that's the one impact I can have on match day. And, and I just thought we needed to try something a little bit different yesterday because, you know, the conditions were really tough. I, you know, the, when we're trying to play the kind of football we are and under those conditions against a, a determined opponent, it, it's very difficult to get any momentum going. And I just thought, you know, we, we needed to do something bold on the day to try and change things around. And, 
yeah, again, it, it's easy for me to throw those guys on that they've got to do the business. Uh, but but they've been really good, those players we threw on towards the end, and I was confident they'd make an impact, and and they did. They had exactly, you know, I think surprised Perth a little bit because they had a bit of energy, started doing things a little bit differently, and uh, we were able to get some momentum uh, leading into the two goals. And having won the uh, final, how important is it for you and the club to these last sort of two games in Asia to you know, uh, do well? Yeah, really, yeah, really important because um, we obviously been disappointed with you know, the, the results more than anything else. I think our performances in the last three games have been pretty good. And again, like I said, people need to understand how difficult it is to juggle both. Um, at least now we play them with clear air. Um, I mean, I noticed on the weekend, FC Tokyo, who everyone says is such a fantastic side, and they are, they got beaten 4-0 at home, so they're struggling with both competitions as well. So it, it's been really tough, but, you know, we've been really close to achieving what we want to, but ultimately we've fallen short. So, you know, we need to, to try and get a win in these last two games just for our development. We know we're in Asia next year, and I'm sure the boys are looking really forward to, to you know, taking our game to the next level and, and the fact that we've just got those games now without uh, A-League commitments, I think, hopefully will, will show us uh, in, the, in the best possible light.